The question for this video is, can you 3D print molds and use them to cast resin? I don't know, let's go find out. I made this little character out of simple geometric shapes in Blender. He's poseable because he has rotation in several of his joints, but that's not the most important thing about him. I named him Pullbot after his most important characteristic, and that is that each and every one of his shapes have draft, and there are no undercuts. Rigid tools can come together and pull apart, and there's nothing in the design of the model that traps the model inside the rigid tool. And the question that the injection molders always ask is, what direction does it pull? Is it a side-by-side -side pull? Is it a top-to-bottom pull? Is it a multi-part pull? But pull is that important characteristic that means that you can open the mold, and there's nothing about the design that would trap the casting inside of it. Even the smallest details, like the eyes and the mouth, have that same property. There are no undercuts at all. You can see in these diagrams how I drafted the parts of the eyes so that there would be no undercut. And even here in the mouth, there's absolutely no chance that that mouth can lock into the mold. It'll just pull right out. And another reason I built them out of individual shapes is it's simpler to make the molds that way because I'm going to use an operation called a boolean. And booleans are just a way to use one object as a cutter that cuts the other object. Like this head here, the first thing you do is we bring the part, the mold part, and the head part together. And then you run the boolean, and it, the head itself is used as a cutter and cuts out the cavity out of the mold. I mean, how cool is that? It's so simple. You can imagine how hard it would be to model that cavity in that block in, in, in the negative. It would be really difficult. You do the exact same procedure with the eyes. You select the eyes, then you select the block, and you run the Boolean operation. And like magic, it just cuts them out. It's so great. <laughs> and also the mouth, it's the same exact way. So once you have the character made, it's pretty easy to use him to cut the negative shapes out of the mold. After the molds were made, I exported them out as STL files and brought them into Chittabox. And that's a slicing program that analyzes the model, slices it up, and sends the instructions to the printer. There's nothing more boring on the earth than watching a resin printer at work. You can't say, <laughs> really, nothing much happening. It's a really a slow process. I used our Mars 2 printer, which our friends at Elegoo was kind enough to send over. Thank you, Elegoo. Link to the printers in the description. Here are the parts that I printed. Those I didn't make mold cavities for. And same with the uh, leg and foot. The appendages, I just printed it in the positive. So I have a head cavity, pants, and the shirt and shoulders. The main problem that I had with the prints that I've discovered is that they don't close up as tightly as I would like. And the reason they don't, I use the same size of sphere to weld onto the positive side as I did to cut the negative side. And the truth of the matter is they don't fit. So what we're gonna do is you are gonna remove the pins. It wasn't pretty, but it mostly worked. It got them pretty far down. Just want to bring them flush, no more. That's a lot better, let me tell you. It's a lot, <laughs> a lot better than it was. Uh, pretty nice. Not bad. All right, we'll give that a try, see what happens. The other thing I'm seriously contemplating is putting a coat of beeswax on these molds. I did one and it's looking really tight and nice. So let's see if we can't make up some nice mold closures by waxing these molds. Even with a coat of wax on these, I think it's still a good idea to put some ease release on there. So let me uh, do that. That'll help with the uh, spray release business. That's a light mist. We'll do it. Okay, let's fill those up and let's pressure pot them. Mixed up a 30 gram batch of res. Put this in the tank. All right, pop these out of the tank. Let's see what we get. Very curious. Just get a knife in there. Pop it. Popping them apart is one thing. Popping them out is another. That's going to be an interesting challenge all by itself, huh? Take advantage of a little bit of flex in the mold. Woo! <laughs> Tell you what, for a two-part mold, that's a, not a terrible parting line. I can live with that in terms of sanding. That's not bad. I don't hate that. There we go. 
So one half's easy to get out. That one's hard to get out. I may have to use a tool. I don't want to ding either the mold or the casting. This was harder to get out, but what I had to do was I stuck the, the mold in a vise, and that enabled me to get enough, be able to put enough pressure on the casting to pop it out. So that's proof of concept. Waxing worked. Okay, let's pour. I'm pouring these full. but I'm only pouring these half full, just up to the sprue. And that is so, I know I'm gonna get a good face and back casting. It's starting to gel. Starting to gel, time to go. These parts were 3D printed. Pop a little super glue on here. Gotta love our super thin CA from Starbond. Stuff works fine. I'm just using a Q-tip to sop up the extra glue. To do the arms, Got to drill some holes. One thing nice about fresh resin, it drills, it machines and drills really nice. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> All right, cool, let's get the other side. This is another reason why I didn't make the arms as part of the torso. Uh, it's just more fun to have, have them to be art stiff enough in there and have them be articulatable. This printing resin is much, much harder and more brittle than the casting resin that I'm used to. The casting resin is, is tougher, but boy, this printing resin is just glass hard and brittle. All right, let's drill this in. Can it be too small? Maybe. Let's see. No, it's just right. It's just about right. Okay. Now, we're gonna need a neck, and I'm inclined to use part of this leg. These legs are too long. I'm gonna cut these in half over on the bandsaw. Let me go do that, I'll bring them back. That, that fits, boy, that's tight, but it fits. Cool. Okay, last pour, let's top it off. Doesn't look like it's leaking much. All right, well, let's go ahead and tank this boy. And while we wait for that last pour to cook, Let's get these guys out. That popped right out. I figured out a system over at the vice table for getting this out. And what I did was I chucked this thing into a vice like that. And then I took a mallet and a drill like this and just whacked it. Oops, see, look at that. <laughs> so a quick whack knocks it right out. So that was a little learning that I just done. It's the first flash we've seen today. Pretty minor. I gotta tell you, I'm not I'm not unhappy about these straight, nice, straight, crisp parting lines. Again, that resin cuts like butter because it's fresh. It's super easy to cut. The good news is I got him out and he's looking pretty cute. The bad news is I broke the mold to do it. So we caught one wicked bubble right here, super easy to fix, good location. And that was all because of my pre-pour strategy. Uh, we knew we'd catch clean fronts and backs. One thing that is interesting is it almost looks like he has wood grain pattern. And that is because when I was putting on the beeswax, I overheated this half of the mold and it started to crack. It, developed, it, it definitely developed cracks in it. And those cracks manifested themselves. They almost look like, almost looks like wood grain in there. Anyway, let's put them together, see what we got. <laughs> hey, he came out pretty cute, I think. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, watch this video next, and I will see you next week. That mic is on. Sound should be on. Sound is definitely on. Oh, good. I glued that on there good. Isn't that special? All right, here we go.